Section 48 of Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 2. Section 48. Selected Poems by Matthew Arnold To a Friend Who prop thou ask'st in these bad days, my mind? He much, the old man who clearest soul of men, Saw the wide prospect and the Asian fen, And Molus Hill and Smyrna Bay, though blind. Much he, whose friendship by not long since won, that halting slave who in Nicopolis taught Arian when Vespasian's brutal son cleared Rome of what most shamed him. But he is my special thanks whose even balanced soul from first youth tested up to extreme old age, business could not make dull nor passion wild, who saw life steadily and saw it whole, the mellow glory of the attic stage singer of sweet colonus and its child youth and calm tis death and peace indeed is here and ease from shame and rest from fear there's nothing can dismarble now the smoothness of that limpid brow but is a calm like this in truth the crowning end of life and youth and when this boon rewards the dead, are all debts paid, has all been said? And is the heart of youth so light, its steps so firm, its eye so bright, because on its hot brow there blows a wind of promise and repose from the far grave to which it goes, because it has the hope to come one day to harbor in the tomb? ah no the bliss youth dreams is one for daylight for the cheerful sun for feeling nerves and living breath youth dreams a bliss on this side death it dreams a rest if not more deep more grateful than this marble sleep it hears a voice within it tell calm's not life's crown though calm is well tis all perhaps which man acquires but tis not what our youth desires isolation to marguerite we were apart yet day by day i bade my heart more constant be i bade it keep the world away and grow a home for only thee nor feared but thy love likewise grew like mine each day more tried more true the fault was grave i might have known what far too soon alas i learned the heart can bind itself alone and faith may oft be unreturned self swayed our feelings ebb and swell thou lovest no more farewell 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 and thou thou lonely heart which never yet without remorse even for a moment didst depart from thy remote and spirit course to haunt the place where passions reign back to thy solitude again back with the conscious thrill of shame which luna felt that summer night flashed through her pure immortal frame when she forsook the starry height to hang over endymion's sleep upon the pine-grown latmian steep yet she chaste queen had never proved how vain a thing is mortal love wandering in heaven far removed but thou hast long had place to prove this truth to prove and make thine own thou hast been shalt be art alone or if not quite alone yet they which touch thee are unmating things ocean and clouds and night and day 
lorn autumns and triumphant springs, and life, and others' joy and pain, and love, if love, of happier men, of happier men, for they at least have dreamed two human hearts might blend in one, and were through faith released from isolation without end prolonged nor knew, although not less alone than thou, their loneliness. Yes, in the sea of life enisled, with echoing straits between us thrown, dotting the shoreless watery wild, we mortal millions live alone. The islands feel the enclasping flow, and then their endless bounds they know, but when the moon their hollow lights, and they are swept by balms of spring, and in their glens on starry nights the nightingales divinely sing, and lovely notes from shore to shore across the sounds and channels pour, oh, then a longing like despair is to their farthest cavern sent, for surely once they feel we were parts of a single continent. Now round us spreads the watery plain, O oh, might our marges meet again! Who ordered that their longing's fire should be, as soon as kindled, cooled? Who renders vain their deep desire? A god, a god their severance ruled, and bad betwixt their shores to be the unplumbed salt estranging sea. Stanzas in memory of the author of Obermann, 1849. In front the awful alpine track crawls up its rocky stair. The autumn storm winds drive the rack close o'er it in the air. Behind are the abandoned baths, mute in their meadows lone. The leaves are on the valley paths, the mists are on the Rhone the white mists rolling like a sea. I hear the torrents roar. Yes, Oberbahn, all speaks of thee. I feel thee near once more. I turn thy leaves. I feel their breath once more upon me roll, that air of languor, cold, and death, which brooded o'er thy soul. Fly hence, pure wretch, whoe'er thou art, condemned to cast about, all shipwreck in thy own weak heart for comfort from without. A fever in these pages burns beneath the calm they feign. A wounded human spirit turns here on its bed of pain. Yes, though the virgin mountain air fresh through these pages blows, though to these leaves the glaciers spare the soul of their mute snows, Though here a mountain murmur swells of many a dark-bowed pine, Though as you read you hear the bells of the high-pasturing kine, Yet through the hum of torrent lone and brooding mountain bee, There sobs I know not what ground-tone of human agony. Is it for this, because the sound is fraught too deep with pain, That Obermann the world around so little loves thy strain? And then we turn, thou sadder sage, to thee. We feel thy spell. The hopeless tangle of our age thou too hast scanned it well. Immovable thou sittest, still as death, composed to bear. Thy head is clear, thy feeling chill, and icy thy despair. He who hath watched, not shared the strife, knows how the day hath gone. He only lives with the world's life, who hath renounced his own. To thee we come, then. Clouds are rolled where thou, O seer, art set. Thy realm of thought is drear and cold. The world is colder yet. And thou hast pleasures, too, to share with those who come to thee. Balms floating on thy mountain air, and healing sights to see. How often... Where the slopes are green, on Jaman hast thou sat, By some high chalet door, and seen the summer day grow late, And darkness steal o'er the wet grass with the pale crocus starred, And reach that glimmering sheet of glass, 
beneath the piney sward lake leman's waters far below and watched the rosy light fade from the distant peaks of snow and on the air of night heard accents of the eternal tongue through the pine branches play listened and felt thyself grow young listened and wept away away the dreams that but deceive and thou sad guide adieu i go fate drives me but i leave half of my life with you we in some unknown powers employ move on a rigorous line can neither when we will enjoy nor when we will resign i in the world must live but thou thou melancholy shade wilt not if thou canst see me now condemn me nor upbraid for thou art gone away from earth and place with those dost claim the children of the second birth whom the world could not tame farewell whether thou now liest near that much-loved inland sea the ripples of whose blue waves cheer vevi and mary and in that gracious region bland where with clear rustling wave the scented pines of switzerland stand dark round thy green grave between the dusty vineyard walls issuing on that green place the early peasant still recalls the pensive stranger's face and stoops to clear thy moss-grown date ere he plods on again or whether by maligner fate among the swarms of men where between granite terraces the blue seine rolls her wave the capital of pleasures sees thy hardly heard of grave farewell under the sky we part in this stern alpine dell o unstrung will o broken heart a last a last farewell memorial verses eighteen fifty goethe in weimar sleeps and greece long since saw byron's struggle cease but one such death remained to come the last poetic voice is dumb we stand to-day by wordsworth's tomb when byron's eyes were shut in death we bowed our head and held our breath he taught us little but our soul had felt him like the thunder's roll with shivering heart the strife we saw of passion with eternal law and yet with reverential awe we watched the fount of fiery life which served for that titanic strife when Goethe's death was told we said sunk then is europe's sagest head physician of the iron age goethe has done his pilgrimage he took the suffering human race he read each wound each weakness clear and struck his finger on the place and said thou ailest here and here he looked on europe's dying hour of fitful dream and feverish power his eye plunged down the weltering strife the turmoil of expiring life he said the end is everywhere art still has truth take refuge there and he was happy if to know causes of things and far below his feet to see the lurid flow of terror and insane distress and headlong fate be happiness and wordsworth ah pale ghosts rejoice for never has such soothing voice been to your shadowy world conveyed since erst at morn some wandering shade heard the clear song of orpheus come through hades and the mournful gloom wordsworth has gone from us and ye ah may ye feel his voice as we he too upon a wintry clime had fallen on this iron time of doubts disputes distractions fears he found us when the age had bound our soul in its benumbing round he spoke and loosed our heart in tears he laid us as we lay at birth on the cool flowery lap of earth smiles broke from us and we had ease 
the hills were round us and the breeze went o'er the sunlit fields again our foreheads felt the wind and rain our youth returned for there was shed on spirits that had long been dead spirits dried up and closely furled the freshness of the early world ah since dark days still bring to light man's prudence and man's fiery might time may restore us in his course goethe's sage mind and byron's force but where will europe's latter hour again find wordsworth's healing power others will teach us how to dare and against fear our breast to steel others will strengthen us to bear but who ah who will make us feel the cloud of mortal destiny others will front it fearlessly but who like him will put it by keep fresh the grass upon his grave o rota with thy living wave sing him thy best for few or none hears thy voice right now he is gone the sick king in bokhara hussein o most just vizier send away the cloth merchants and let them be them and their dues this day the king is ill at ease and calls for thee the vizier o merchants tarry yet a day here in bokhara but at noon to-morrow come and ye shall pay each fortieth web of cloth to me as the law is and go your way o hussein lead me to the king thou teller of sweet tales thine own ferduces and the others lead how is it with my lord hussein alone ever since prayer time he doth wait o vizier without lying down in the great window of the gate looking into the registan where through the cellars booths the slaves are this way bringing the dead man o vizier here is the king's door the king o vizier i may bury him the vizier o king thou knowest i have been sick these many days and heard no thing for allah shut my ears and mind not even what thou dost o king wherefore that i might counsel thee let hussein if thou wilt make haste to speak in order what hath chanced the king o vizier be it as thou sayest hussein three days since at the time of prayer a certain moolah with his robe all rent and dust upon his hair watched my lord's coming forth and pushed the golden mace-bearers aside and fell at the king's feet and cried justice o king and on myself on this great sinner who did break the law and by the law must die vengeance o king but the king spake what fool is this that hurts our ears with folly or what drunken slave my guards what prick him with your spears prick me the fellow from the path as the king said so was it done and to the mosque my lord passed on but on the morrow when the king went forth again the holy book carried before him as his right and through the square his way he took my man comes running flecked with blood from yesterday and falling down cries out most earnestly o king my lord o king do right i pray how canst thou ere thou hear discern if i speak folly but a king whether a thing be great or small like allah hears and judges all wherefore hear thou thou knowest how fierce in these last days the sun hath burned that the green water in the tanks is to a putrid puddle turned and the canal that from the stream of samarkand is brought this way wastes and runs thinner every day now i at nightfall had gone forth alone and in a darksome place under some mulberry trees i found a little pool and in short space with all the water that was there i filled my pitcher and stole home unseen and having drink to spare i hid the can behind the door and went up on the roof to sleep but in the night which was with wind and burning dust 
again i creep down having fever for a drink now meanwhile had my brethren found the water-pitcher where it stood behind the door upon the ground and called my mother and they all as they were thirsty and the night most sultry drained the pitcher there that they sat with it in my sight their lips still wet when i came down now mark i being fevered sick most unblessed also at that sight break forth and curse them dost thou hear one was my mother now do right but my lord mused a space and said send him away sirs and make on it is some madman the king said as the king bade so was it done the morrow at the selfsame hour in the king's path behold the man not kneeling sternly fixed he stood right opposite and thus began frowning grim down thou wicked king most deaf where thou shouldst most give ear what must i howl in the next world because thou wilt not listen here what wilt thou pray and get thee grace and all grace shall to me be grudged nay but i swear from this path i will not stir till i be judged then they who stood about the king drew close together and conferred till that the king stood forth and said before the priests thou shalt be heard but when the ulemas were met and the thing heard they doubted not but sentenced him as the law is to die by stoning on the spot now the king charged us secretly stoned must he be the law stands so yet if he seek to fly give way hinder him not but let him go so saying the king took a stone and cast it softly but the man with a great joy upon his face kneeled down and cried not neither ran so they whose lot it was cast stones that they flew thick and bruised him sore but he praised allah with loud voice and remained kneeling as before my lord had covered up his face but when one told him he is dead turning him quickly to go in bring thou to me his corpse he said and truly while i speak o king i hear the bearers on the stair wilt thou they straightway bring him in ho enter ye who tarry there the vizier o king in this i praise thee not now must i call thy grief not wise is he thy friend or of thy blood to find such favour in thine eyes nay were he thine own mother's son still thou art king and the law stands it were not meet the balance swerved the sword were broken in thy hands but being nothing as he is why for no cause make sad thy face lo i am old three kings ere thee have i seen reigning in this place but who through all this length of time could bear the burden of his years if he for strangers pained his heart not less than those who merit tears fathers we must have wife and child and grievous is the grief for these this pain alone which must be borne makes the head white and bows the knees but other loads than this his own one man is not well made to bear besides to each are his own friends to mourn with him and show him care look this is but one single place though it be great all the earth round if a man bear to have it so things which might vex him shall be found all these have sorrow and keep still whilst other men make cheer and sing wilt thou have pity on all these no nor on this dead dog o king the king o vizier thou art old i young clear in these things i cannot see my head is burning and a heat is in my skin which angers me but hear ye this ye sons of men they that bear rule and are obeyed unto a rule more strong than theirs are in their turn obedient made 
in vain therefore with wistful eyes gazing up hither the poor man who loiters by the high-heaped booths below there in the registan says happy ye who lodges there with silken raiment store of rice and for this drought all kinds of fruits grape syrup squares of coloured ice with cherries served in drifts of snow in vain hath a king power to build houses arcades enamelled mosques and to make orchard closes fill with curious fruit trees brought from far with cisterns for the winter rain and in the desert spacious inns in divers places if that pain is not more lightened which he feels if his will be not satisfied and that it be not from all time the law is planted to abide thou wast a sinner thou poor man thou wast a thirst and didst not see that though we take what we desire we must not snatch it eagerly and i have meat and drink at will and rooms of treasures not a few but i am sick nor heed i these and what i would i cannot do even the great honour which i have when i am dead will soon grow still so have i neither joy nor fame but what i can do that i will i have a fretted brickwork tomb upon a hill on the right hand hard by a close of apricots upon the road of samarcand thither o vizier will i bear this man my pity could not save and plucking up the marble flags there lay his body in my grave bring water nard and linen rolls wash off all blood set smooth each limb then say he was not wholly vile because a king shall bury him dover beach the sea is calm to-night the tide is full the moon lies fair upon the straits on the french coast the light gleams and is gone the cliffs of england stand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay come to the window sweet is the night air only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon blanched sand listen you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in sophocles long ago heard it on the aegean and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery we find also in the sound a thought hearing it by this distant northern sea the sea of faith was once too at the full and round earth's shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled but now i only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roar retreating to the breath of the night wind down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world ah love let us be true to one another for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams so various so beautiful so new hath really neither joy nor love nor light nor certitude nor peace nor help for pain and we are here as on a darkling plain swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight where ignorant armies clash by night self-dependence weary of myself and sick of asking what i am and what i ought to be at this vessel's prow i stand which bears me forwards forwards o'er the starlit sea and a look of passionate desire o'er the sea and to the stars i send ye who from my childhood up have calmed me calm me ah compose me to the end ah once more i cried ye stars ye waters on my heart your mighty charm renew 
still still let me as i gaze upon you feel my soul becoming vast like you from the intense clear star-sown vault of heaven over the lit sea's unquiet way in the rustling night air came the answer wouldst thou be as these are live as they unaffrighted by the silence round them undistracted by the sights they see these demand not that the things without them yield them love amusement sympathy and with joy the stars perform their shining and the sea its long moon-silvered roll for self-poised they live nor pine with noting all the fever of some differing soul bounded by themselves and unregardful in what state god's other works may be in their own tasks all their powers pouring these attain the mighty life you see o oh, airborne voice long since severely clear a cry like thine in mine own heart i hear resolve to be thyself and know that he who finds himself loses his misery stanzas from the grande chartreuse oh hide me in your gloom profound ye solemn seats of holy pain take me cowled forms and fence me round till i possess my soul again till free my thoughts before me roll not chafed by hourly false control or the world cries your faith is now but a dead time's exploded dream my melancholy silas say is a past mood and outworn theme as if the world had ever had a faith or silas's been sad ah if it be past take away at least the restlessness the pain be man henceforth no more a prey to these outdated stings again the nobleness of grief is gone ah leave us not the fret alone but if you cannot give us ease last of the race of them who grieve here leave us to die out with these last of the people who believe silent while years engrave the brow silent the best are silent now achilles ponders in his tent the kings of modern thought are dumb silent they are though not content and wait to see the future come they have the grief men had of yore but they contend and cry no more our fathers watered with their tears this sea of time whereon we sail their voices were in all men's ears who passed within their puissant hail still the same ocean round us raves but we stand mute and watch the waves for what availed it all the noise and outcry of the former men say have their sons achieved more joys say is life lighter now than then the sufferers died they left their pain the pangs which tortured them remain what helps it now that byron bore with haughty scorn which mocked the smart through europe to the Italian shore the pageant of his bleeding heart that thousands counted every groan and europe made his woe her own what boots it shelley that the breeze carried thy lovely wail away musical through italian trees which fringe thy soft blue spatian bay inheritors of thy distress have restless hearts one throb the less or are we easier to have read o obermann the sad stern page which tells us how thou hidst thy head from the fierce tempest of thine age in the lone breaks of fontainebleau or chalets near the alpine snow ye slumber in your silent grave the world which for an idle day grace to your mood of sadness gave long since hath flung her weeds away the eternal trifler breaks your spell but we we learnt your lore too well 
years hence perhaps may dawn an age more fortunate alas than we which without hardness will be sage and gay without frivolity sons of the world oh speed those years but while we wait allow our tears a summer night in the deserted moon-blanched street how lonely rings the echo of my feet those windows which i gaze at frown silent and white unopening down repellent as the world but see a break between the housetops shows the moon and lost behind her fading dim into the dewy dark obscurity down at the far horizon's rim doth the whole tract of heaven disclose and to my mind the thought is on a sudden brought of a past night and a far different scene headlands stood out into the moonlit deep as clearly as at noon the spring tides brimming flow heaved dazzlingly between houses with long wide sweep girdled the glistening bay behind through the soft air the blue haze cradled mountains spread away that night was far more fair but the same restless pacings to and fro and the same vainly throbbing heart was there and the same bright calm moon and the calm moonlight seems to say hast thou then still the old unquiet breast which neither deadens into rest nor ever feels the fiery glow that whirls the spirit from itself away but fluctuates to and fro never by passion quite possessed and never quite benumbed by the world's sway and i i know not if to pray still to be what i am or yield and be like all the other men i see for most men in a brazen prison live where in the sun's hot eye with heads bent o'er their toil they languidly their lives to some unmeaning task-work give dreaming of naught beyond their prison wall and as year after year fresh products of their barren labor fall from their tired hands and rest never yet comes more near gloom settles slowly down over their breast and while they try to stem the waves of mournful thought by which they are pressed death in their prison reaches them unfreed having seen nothing still unblessed and the rest a few escape their prison and depart on the wide ocean of life anew there the freed prisoner where'er his heart listeth will sail nor doth he know how there prevail despotic on that sea trade winds which cross it from eternity a while he holds some false way undebarred by thwarting signs and braves the freshening wind and blackening waves and then the tempest strikes him and between the lightning bursts is seen only a driving wreck and the pale master on his spar-strewn deck with anguished face and flying hair grasping the rudder hard still bent to make some port he knows not where still standing for some false impossible shore and sterner comes the roar of sea and wind and through the deepening gloom fainter and fainter wreck and helmsman loom and he too disappears and comes no more is there no life but these alone madman or slave must man be one plainness and clearness without shadow of stain clearness divine ye heavens whose pure dark regions have no sign of languor though so calm and though so great are yet untroubled and unpassionate who though so noble share in the world's toil and though so tasked keep free from dust and soil i will not say that your mild deeps retain a tinge it may be of their silent pain who have longed deeply once and longed in vain 
but i will rather say that you remain a world above man's head to let him see how boundless might his soul's horizons be how vast yet of what clear transparency how it were good to live there and breathe free how fair a lot to fill is left to each man still the better part long fed on boundless hopes o race of man how angrily thou spurnst all simpler fare christ some one says was human as we are no judge eyes us from heaven our sin to scan we live no more when we have done our span well then for christ thou answerest who can care from sin which heaven records not why forbear live we like brutes our life without a plan so answerest thou but why not rather say hath man no second life pitch this one high sits there no judge in heaven our sin to see more strictly than the inward judge obey was christ a man like us ah let us try if we then too can be such men as he the last word creep into thy narrow bed creep and let no more be said vain thy onset all stands fast thou thyself must break at last let the long contention cease geese are swans and swans are geese let them have it how they will thou art tired best be still they out talk thee hiss thee tore thee better men fared thus before thee fired their ringing shot and passed hotly charged and sank at last charge once more then and be dumb let the victors when they come when the forts of folly fall find thy body by the wall end of section forty eight recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio